Welcome to the Velvet Note. We're glad you're spending the evening with us. You're part of the band, so feel free to clap or yell, scream, or throw tomatoes. Is that a tomato? I'm not going to want to throw the food at me.
thank you very much, everybody, for coming out. I'm going to introduce the band. You guys mind if I introduce the band real quick? Are, are we too loud? Is the volume okay? Is it? Because if, if it's too loud, we can turn up. Yeah, let me let me introduce let me introduce the band real quick. Huh? Yaku, have you met the Fasili? Fasili, awesome. Oh, it's a Canadian thing. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we, what we're doing tonight uh, is music. We're glad you came out to spend the evening with us. And that's real important for us because all of us have been suffering these past couple of years with this, I don't know, this thing that's been going around. I can't remember what it was, but it's had us all locked in the house. So, And uh, music is our outlet, and it's the only thing that keeps us alive. And what keeps us alive more than anything is having you guys here to share the music with. Everything we're doing is original, and we've worked for probably the last 40 years at our craft and talent. At, at least me, I'm the youngest. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, the music we're doing is kind of a, um, a take off of, well, I guess from, from the school that I went to was kind of the school of Miles Davis, which is uh, one of my favorite all-time musicians and composer, and I think Miles did more to um, escalate music than probably any other musician, you know, although we have so many great players out there with Coltrane and Parker and Jimi Hendrix and Zeppelin, I mean, just all these people that uh, share music are around this planet. Uh, Miles was the one that was playing bebop in the 50s and kind of got Coltrane and Parker and all those guys started. And, um, and then in the 60s, he started the, the cool jazz movement, you know, which we call the heroin era. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then in the 70s, he was the one that released the first fusion record. Okay, and what fusion is, people always ask me, what, what, what is fusion? They say, what do you play? And I say, well, it's fusion. It's, what is that? And uh, I guess my version of fusion would be, um, I, I love playing jazz, I love bebop, and I love playing rock, I love Hendrix and Zeppelin. And I'm just confused <laughs> what to play, so I play them both and it's kind of a fusion of styles. And, uh, you know, I mean, as, uh, in the 70s, that was pretty, uh, generic phrase to use because there was really segregated into certain styles of music. You, country was country. There wasn't country or new country or this country or that country or, you know, and same with rock and pop rock and funk rock. And they've got n names that they're still coming out with. Uh, you know, have you heard uh, K-pop and, and pop and, and ba and ta and D and all these other things? Oh, what, what notes does it have? The same notes? Uh, but anyway, that's that's kind of what we are. And, and the cool thing that we're doing today for the fusion is music is really a language. Um, seriously, a, a, a language that you learn um, by listening. You know, everybody that here that speaks English or whatever language, you you probably learned it well before you got into uh, kindergarten because you heard it and you kind of recreated it. You didn't know what nouns and verbs and everything was. You you learned that afterwards. And, um, you know, that's kind of what uh, music being a language. So we have this certain culture that we carry with us, no matter where you are. I've been in the States a long time, and people can still tell I'm Canadian sometimes, eh? And, uh, like if I say I'm sorry, or, you know, I just go to my house, and, you know, it's <laughs> what a boot did. You know, so anyway, we are an international band that kind of brings that culture together. Uh, so on my right here, um, would that be stage right? <laughs> Left? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we've been playing music together in different projects over the past 20 years, and um, I've been real fortunate to have this guy uh, as not only a great musician, but a dear friend. And, and that's what we are up here. We're a family. We're not just doing a gig. You know, we all live in a van down by the river, so, uh, you know, we're doing it because we love music, and we're glad you're here. But uh, born in Japan and has toured the world, a chance to get it for Asala on percussion.
And, and each one of these guys is my brother. Um, um, me and Yaku are twins. Uh, you can tell with the... <laughs> um, this guy's amazing. Uh, we, we, yeah. yeah. All, all the way from Ivory Coast, Africa. Um, me and Yaku, when we started playing a few years back, we just connected. We, uh, from different parts of the world, we listen to the same kind of music and we're able to play together and, and you know, it's probably easy for him. It was tough for me to hang on because he's getting ready to do a concert up here on uh, the 23rd, October. And it's going to be African-influenced stuff that's just amazing. Um, so... Where's the concert? It'll be here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll probably be here with my band Friday night, and then Saturday we'll be here with uh, Yaku doing his music, his comp own compositions that, that are just incredible. Um, so definitely make both of those. Get your seats now. The same seat you have, we'll reserve them for you. Um, yeah, so from Ivory Coast, Yaku Daniel Ngusi. And this guy here, too, is my younger brother. <laughs> Although he looks older than me, he's my younger brother. Um, he is a, just a dedicated bass player. I've been fortunate to play with him for years, too. Um, and when I first met him, he just showed up with his bass and started playing, and it was like, wow, this guy's got this really cool pocket that he's playing in, you know? And I kind of wondered, what, he doesn't sound like it's, he learned it from America, you know? And he happened to be, happens to be the number one recorded bass player in Ethiopia. Um, so put your hands together for Fasir Nizi. <laughs> and Fasil has, the bass player here, has played with this great keyboard player who is also from Ethiopia. His name is Kay. <laughs> Keys Kuru from Ethiopia. And it's, and it's really cool how this music works, you know, because it, Miles had this way, Miles Davis had this way of, you know, if you play it like the record, you're fired kind of thing. And he really, you know, I, I was fortunate to be good friends with a guitar player named Robin Ford who got a gig with Miles. And I asked Robin one day, I said, I said, man, what was it like when you got the gig with Miles? He says, I got off the plane, I walked on the stage, and Miles came up, put his hand on his shoulder, and said, get them chords, Robin. And he walked away, and that was their rehearsal. And then they started playing in a football stadium, you know? So that was kind of Miles' way of, uh, you know, wanting you to really dig into your heart and, and play from your soul, not just rehearse stuff and play it like the record and stuff like that. So a lot of magic happens. And I mentioned that because last week, Fasil goes, man, I know this keyboard player from Ethiopia, can I bring him? I said, sure. And he shows up and he had his little keyboard under his arms and I said, oh, hey man, how you doing? I said, yeah, you set up right there. And he put, we played last week and he just killed it. You know, we just met and we got on stage and just killed it. It was just a beautiful thing. So we packed up for the gig and then as we were leaving, he said, man, I really had fun, man. I, I hope we could do it again. I said, what do you mean? You're in the band. You better be here next week. <laughs> so, you know, it's just a great thing. Music's a beautiful thing, and I'm, I'm so glad you guys are here to share it with us. So we're going to continue playing some more music. And uh, thanks again for you guys for showing up. That that's really means a lot to us. Because I tell you, we played for chairs for a long time, and it's a real drag. You know, I'll tell a joke, and the chair just looks at me. <laughs> Thank you. 
in the back? No? I can't really see from up here. Okay, that tune was called Simple Simon. <laughs> it was supposed to be simple. Um, we're going to play this tune called Spazio d'Alberto in Italians and Isles. That means open air. In Italian and in English. <laughs> so, and open air kind of gives it the vibe of this song, kind of has this openness to it. Um, but we're really excited about this song because uh, a guy in Italy picked it up, and um, I don't know what you call them nowadays. They're, they have as many names as, as uh, record styles do. And he's like a producer, engineer, record label promoter. One of those guys, a social media, I guess, is, is what it is now. Um, but anyway, he had picked up the song and had it played over 150 different stations in Europe last year. And um, 
you know, really excited about that. Um, and uh, when I get my royalties from Spotify and all that, I'll be able to get a cup of coffee. And I told him if he could get it, I get it another year, I'll be able to get cream for it next year. So I'm looking forward to cream in my coffee.
was a Canadian song. <laughs> that one's called. That one was called Ice Time. Ice. Yes. And uh, does anybody know what Ice Time means? Hockey. Hockey. Yeah, it's not a drug. It's hockey. <laughs> and in Canada, when we were eight years old, we'd all get a twelve pack of beer and. After we got done drinking it, whatever money we had left, we'd pitch in and rent the ice rink. And we'd call everybody and say, we have ice time. We'd show up with our skates, and after the fights, we'd play hockey. So, uh, are you going to play bass on that? Like you play drums? Anyway. Um, with this particular club here, we've, we've traveled all over the world with uh, this music. And uh, we've played in a lot of clubs. And I can tell you that this place here is one of the best places on the planet to play in. Um, it's really, really, um, you guys are very fortunate to be here and be able to be in a club, and so are we, to be able to be in a place like this, to play live music and have it you know, the sound is, I know it's a little loud, but uh, the sound proofing here is, you know, you can really hear every instrument, um, you know, and, and we've played in some dives, as you can imagine. We all live in a band down by the river, so. Um, <clears throat> uh, Tamara Ford, the uh, sole proprietor of this operation here, the Velvet Note, has gone to long lengths, any lengths, to keep this place open. And uh, this particular band here, as we were stuck from not being able to travel, had uh, been fortunate enough to have a residency here for most Friday nights uh, to help keep it going. And I know Tamara, uh, along with Sheila and um, some of her other servers here, have really kept this place going. She's even gone back into the kitchen to cook and come to find out she is a master cook and she takes it like it's her art she just loves to cook you know like we love to do music she puts that into it and I talk to her about setting up for the gigs during the day and stuff and I'll catch her at the grocery store or whatever store uh, wherever they what is it uh, the market market that's what I'm thinking of um, ordering grass fed top of the line she doesn't cut corners on her on her art of cooking, as you can taste. It's top notch, so. and it's so good. Yes. Um, I thought she was outside. <laughs> yeah. So uh, even to the point where, and the reason why I mentioned this because you look here now and we got a crowd. We're sold out. And there is a lot of clubs that we've played at around the world that have closed down, shut their doors, and are no longer in business. That were major, major clubs. So we're real fortunate, and you guys are a big part of that by showing up and, and helping support live music and have a good time, get out of the, uh, the whatever, the cage of uh, being shelter, the house, get out of the house. <laughs> so anyway. Um, Huh? He doesn't have any answers. He drives the band down by the river. Well, I just I just quit my last job today, and I'm never ever going back after what this guy said to me. What did he say, Bill? He said I was fired. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Oh, do you guys want to hear the song I just wrote last week? Yes! That's a, it's a new one, okay.
Anyway. Spirit, yeah. Spirit, you know. A lawsuit for 25. They'll have to get through spirit before they get to me, right? Yeah, that's fine. So, so how's everybody doing? Good. 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 Uh, individually, how's everybody doing? We're going to feature this, we're going to do this tune off of our, our fourth record. We've got six of them out, so please don't leave without getting a record. It's, um, I'm, I'm not selling them, I'm just giving them to you, especially the nothing less than a hundred dollar bill. But other than that, no, seriously, if you take the CD and you play it, that's, you know, or give it away as a gift, or just keep it as a, mem a remembrance of tonight. Um, so don't leave without uh, picking up a CD or a couple of them. Um, but this tune we're about to do is called What Are You Doing? And um, as I mentioned, my, men, my uh, school of Miles Davis, um, I was very fortunate to become really, really close friends. And I don't just mean on Facebook. <laughs> you know, I've had that happen. I, it was with the drummer. He's, you're talking about this real great musician. He goes, oh man, I'm friends with him. And I was like, really? Oh, you gotta hook us up. He goes, I said, you, you, have you talked to him lately? He said, no, 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 we're, but we're, we're good friends and everything. And come to find out, he, yeah, he goes, no, we're friends on Facebook. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm friends with everybody on Facebook. I don't even know. But anyway, this guy um, was Miles Davis's guitar player uh, in the late 70s, and I recorded three records from him. And, and, um, and the story with him was, uh, as I mentioned with uh, John McLaughlin, not John McLaughlin, but um, in the 70s, Miles started Fusion. Uh, and the guitar player was John McLaughlin, and uh, he introduced Miles Davis to Jimi Hendrix, and they were supposed to record some music together, but Hendrix had passed before they had the opportunity to do that. And Miles wanted a guitar player that could play rock, but also play jazz changes, and that was Mike Stern that got the gig for that. And um, Mike has become, has been my mentor for the past 30 years, and. Um, when he comes down into town, he stays at my place, and, and uh, one of the trips he made a few decades ago, we were able to, uh, well, maybe 10, 12 years ago, um, record this song with Mike on it, featuring Mike, uh, called What Are You Doing? And um, we're going to play that one now, so... See, after I get done name dropping, I'm gonna go into place dropping. Like I used to live in Los Angeles, and when I moved to New York, Thank you. 
What are we doing now? We're gonna we're gonna do a real quick Miles Davis tune. And for any musicians that are taking notes, this is in the key of D minor. And if you've ever seen Spinal Tap, it's the saddest of all keys. <laughs> um, this tune is in the '60s when Miles created what was called. Uh, cool jazz. And just to let you know kind of what's happening with uh, the music is it had a what was called rhythm changes. A 32 bar form. Uh, I'll show you, I'll demonstrate just a little bit. Hold that for me. That's a 32 bar form. That was pretty good. Well, I didn't do the last eight, but I, it was the same as, it's an AABA -A section, okay? Now we're gonna do what Miles did, because Miles was an in innovator, okay? He took the same 32 bar form, and he, th he did it this way. This is called So What? And it's off the most popular sold jazz record of all time. Does anybody know who, what the name of that is? Kind of blue, exactly, kind of blue. And you know when they went in to do that in the studio, they just showed up and played. They didn't rehearse or anything. They showed up, they hit record, and they played. Jazz.
Inside job? Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Uh, we're going to play another tune for you. And just remember, please, don't leave without getting some CDs because I have to carry them and we don't have enough room in the band. We have to live down by the river. We could do that or maybe we'll do a Herbie Hancock tune. Do you know who Herbie played with? That's right, Miles Davis. We'll do our funky version of it. Actually, it's already a funky tune.
together for Basil Wahid on bass. Asa Ala on percussion. Kevru on keys. Raku Daniel and Wilson on drums. My name is Bill Hart. Please check us out again. Thank you so much for coming out.